Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video I post one every day. In this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing BlackBerry stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. BlackBerry is a Canadian company specializing in enterprise software. Originally known as Research in Motion or RIM, it developed the BlackBerry brand with smartphones. It transitioned to an enterprise software and services company under its new CEO. Its products are used by various businesses, car makers, and government agencies. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 10.6 billion market cap. They're trading at $18 a share, and they have 563 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flows, cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. The company did have a lot of free cash flow in 2018, but it's been pretty low after that and they had a negative in 2020. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. They did well in 2018. They had a small 93 million in 2019, then negative after that. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that peaked in 2020 at 1 billion. It dropped in the trailing 12 months to 965 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue and the difference is the gross profit. That's been pretty steady each year around 700 million. Below that is operating expenses. Then below that is operating income. So the company has negative operating income each year. That's not a good sign. Below that is other income and expenses. And they had a negative $768 million in the trailing 12 months. This is mainly from an asset impairment. So the company had a big negative net income in the trailing 12 months. The reason they had positive net income in 2018 and 19 was they had a gain in other income and expenses. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is the operating cash flow. That's how much cash they generate from their operational business. Then there's capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. And that was negative in 2020. It's pretty small in the trailing 12 months, but they seem to do really well in 2018, 659 million of free cash flow. The company doesn't seem to issue much debt or equity to run their business. It did pay down over $600 million of debt in the trailing 12 months. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow, because if you cannot generate positive operating cash flow, you don't have much of a business. And they do have positive operating cash flow each year. It's not big, but at least it's positive. And the way you calculate that, you start with net income that was negative 830 million. Then you have to add back the non-cash items from the income statement. They had $200 million of depreciation. They also had $50 million of stock-based compensation, 78 million of other, and they had a $642 million asset impairment. This is when you decrease the value of an asset in the balance sheet and pass through the loss onto your income statement. So they seem to do really well in 2018, generating over 700 million of operating cash flow, but it's gone down quite a bit after that. Let's look at a capital structure, $2.5 billion of equity, 757 million of debt. They're 77% equity, 23% debt. Their net debt is negative 152 million. That means they can use the cash in their balance sheet to pay down all their debt and they'll still have over $150 million left over. Their WAC is 12%, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's nine billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $6.6 .6 billion. We divide that by 563 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $12. They're trading at $18, so they're trading at a 53% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply, Wall Street's valuation is $8, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued. I did a similar video on BlackBerry on August 2nd, 
and my valuation was $10.90. That was when they were trading at $4.74. I hope some of you bought the stock back in August when I suggested it. If you did, you could have made a really nice return on investment. The stock hit about $12 in 2017. Then it came down to around $5, $6. The stock price has really shot up the last two weeks. The reason the stock price has gone up so much is because Reddit has been really pumping up this stock. Almost 300 million shares were traded on Monday. The 30-day average is only 37 million shares. That's a 900% increase in volume. BlackBerry is linking up with Baidu. Baidu is the Google of China. BlackBerry software would be used in EV cars. The software will be used for self-driving cars. If this software is successful, their stock price can go way higher. The company has a pretty low beta, 1.28, so the stock moves a little more than the market. It's gone up 181% in the past 52 weeks, much better than the S&P 500, which went up 18%. The low was 270, the high was 21. The stock is trading way above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. This is an extremely liquid stock. In the past 10 days, 160 million shares were traded. That is unbelievable. And of the 563 million shares outstanding, 508 million are on float, 50% are held by institutions, and 8% are shorted. I expect that short percentage to go way higher in the next few days. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $2,900 today. Prime Cap owns 11% of the stock. Fairfax Financial owns 8.3%. Ontario Teachers Pension owns 3.5%. Then Vanguard, then Harris Associates. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 11.6. The median is 14.5. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 10.5. So investors are paying $10.50 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share, they're at 4.0. That's between the median and average. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet, and they have 2.5 billion of equity, 177 million of tangible equity because they have 2.4 billion of intangible assets on their balance sheet, 1.4 billion of goodwill, and 900 million of other. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, negative EBIT, negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity, negative net income, negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 1.1, so they can cover their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are 900 million of cash, 235 million of receivables. So it looks like the company may have enough funding to get through the next 12 months without taking on any more debt because they did have positive 25 million of free cash flow and they have 75 million of working capital. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 16 companies in the same industry as BlackBerry. And if BlackBerry has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because they have negative earnings, so they have negative PE. Price of sales, they're better at 10.5, average is 13.3. They're doing a lot better in price to book. Current ratio, they're doing worse than average, but they're above one, so that's fine. They have a terrible ROE. They're pretty low in debt compared to the average. And they have a 10 billion market cap much smaller than the average in the industry, and they don't pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 53% premium because their stock price has come up so much, so it seems like a terrible value. I rank their free cash flows three out of 10. They've been pretty weak lately. They had negative in 2020 and only 25 million in a trailing 12 months. I rank their revenue six out of 10. It is a billion dollars in 2020. It is lower in a trailing 12 months, but it's not too low and lots of companies are struggling. And their ratios are pretty weak. I give them four out of 10. So this stock is a traditional pump and dump. So there's gonna be a lot of bag holders in the next few weeks. I'm not one of them. I hope you're not. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe or comment below. 
Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.